What's up, guys? This is Adi back from Gates Evan International, and I'm here to bring you yet another scouting report, another deep dive on another player. This one is going to be about Francisco Ortega, the left back that we hope will be signing for Olympiacos. I've done one deep dive on a left back that didn't come already, so let's hope that this one is the one that hits the mark. And guys, uh, at the time of recording, this is before we've signed Ortega. This is based on we're doing the scouting report because the information seems good that he's going to be coming. And for those of you that are supporting us on Patreon, you get early access. If you're part of the $5 a month expanded content tier, you get early access to these scouting reports. You can watch them when they're recorded before the player signs. Otherwise, if you're not supporting us on Patreon, you get access once the player signs. That's generally when the scouting reports go live. So check us out on Patreon if you want early access to the data. If you want early access to the scouting reports, you can find us there. And don't forget, take a second real quick, like and subscribe. The engagements help us find more and more red, white fans and continue to grow the red and white community. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get to the meat and bones of the new left back for Olympiacos, 24-year-old Francisco Ortega, left-footed left back, coming in at 5 foot 10 inches, 178 centimeters, 75 kilograms, 165 pounds. Pretty lean build, uh, but he does have some muscle on him. And Francisco has spent pretty much his entire career so far in Argentina, all of it at, in whether it's the the system or part of the first team for Velez or as their the full name club Atletico Velez Sars Field. Well I'll call them Velez for short. And he's always played as a left back. And as it looks, this is going to be depending on who signs first, him or Heze, these are going to be the first players that we actually pay fees for. Uh, with Francisco Ortega, the the rumors in that three to four million range, same thing with Heze. Francisco is a very technical ball carrier, stretches the field wide, loves to receive the ball, carries it forward, loves to run at players, very different from <laughs> what we've had at left back for the last couple of years. An aggressive player with a very aggressive mentality, works hard defensively, uh, even though he doesn't always seem to win some of those physical contests. He's pretty quick, not as fast as Oleg in terms of top speed, but he's got pretty good acceleration, especially when he's using change of direction to get by defenders. Very tricky with the ball at his feet. This player is our replacement for Oleg. If he's coming in, this is, this is going to be the new starting left back. Where the deal with Cardona, who was previously linked with us and who I previously did a scouting report for, where that deal fell, I'm hoping this gets pushed through. And mainly because Ortega is a little bit more of an offensive proposition than Ortega was. So let's get to it. Let's get started with some of the data. And as always, we're going to take a look at with the start. We're going to get into some goal creation. Now for a fullback, the goal threat is not half bad, all things considered. Remember that bottom section is going to be his percentile data with respect to goal creation and where he compares to other fullbacks in the Argentinian first division. He outperformed his XG and taking a closer look at his goal scoring and the goal scoring scenarios or the, the shot scenarios that he gets. I don't think that level of performance is sustainable. His shots are generally coming out past the opponent's penalty area at really bad angles on the left side uh, inside the penalty area. So I really don't foresee him scoring much, maybe outside of the odd shot that the flexing goes in. But as I've said before with fullbacks, we're not expecting them to do much in the goal-scoring area of the game. We care about their service into the box. So regarding his service into the box, assists and key passes, a lot of them coming in the form of crosses or balls played on the ground when he's running towards the end line, playing it back to the penalty area. He creates great opportunities when he's taking defenders one-on-one. If he goes by them and he creates space, it's always dangerous. There's always somebody that seems to be open when he's getting into space and running with the ball. Uh, very capable connecting with his teammates in the final third as well. Very promising in pass and move and, and in one touch in those tight spaces, even though you'll see that some of his volume is not really as high uh, with regards to key passes and things like that. Uh, just when he does get into those scenarios to see how he moves and see what he does. it's I really can't wait to see what he does in Greece because 
he, he just seems like one of those players that can unlock a team just because of how much he moves, draws defenders to him. I really want to see this guy play when he gets to Greece. Shifting focus a little bit, uh, we're going to also now take a look at build up. Uh, the stats for build up are in that top section there. And passing and build up is really where I see him being a huge asset for us. Tons of overlaps and involvement in build up, boatloads of skill, as I mentioned. Loves to get forward, really loves to stretch the field. And he's also not beyond cutting inside and dribbling, you know, through the middle of the field, despite being left footed. We haven't had a left back like this in a very long time. Even Cosa Simicas was not really one to do this. He loves the dribbling 1v1, extremely aggressive offensively, takes every inch of space that's available for him, combines very well with his teammates. I, I mentioned he does combines well in the final third. He's also combining very well in build up. Uh, very high pass accuracy also, considering how much one touch he gets involved in. You'll, he's more likely going to be the outlet receiving the ball. He He's going to be running into space, getting wide to, to make space for the switch, to give that option. And then he's going to carry the ball forward to take the player on. While the club hasn't signed a winger yet, at the time of recording, we have not signed a new winger outside of what we already have. But he's a very offensive option to have at left back and maybe... He'll make up a little bit for this lack of lack of depth at the position. Considering how much he does pass and move and how much one touch at multiple distances, the, the pass accuracy is kind of surprising how high it is, and you can see it there. Very technical. Doesn't really put a foot wrong in a lot of cases, especially in possession when he was in Argentina. So many assets that just make him a great asset in breaking down uh, defensive teams and will make him an asset breaking down some of these teams in Greece. Where I worry a little bit is in Europe because against the better teams, I can't see him being afforded as much success or as much space and as much respect by opposing, opposing players on the dribble. And I mentioned before that he's not the most physically dominant and he, and he isn't, he gets pushed off the ball a lot. And again, not for a lack of aggression. It's just, He's I, I, maybe it's a stature. I don't know. I just he gets muscled off the ball a lot. So I have a feeling that him going one on one and dribbles against defenders could be a little bit difficult, maybe frustrating for us as fans watching him. Given how dynamic he is, though, I really think he can complement Masuras. Uh, Masuras playing an inside winger looking for those runs and him stretching the width a lot. I, I really think that he can do something well with Masuras. And if Masuras can find a scoring feat, this combo, I think, can really do something for us. Moving on to the defensive attributes of his game. Look, defensively, he's solid. Uh, uh, per 90, it doesn't look super impressive. He's sitting just over like the 55, 60%. But um, I thought he was actually pretty good in the grand scheme of things. He lines up well. He's very aggressive, shapes up well with the line. Didn't see him caught out in the run of play. He And as I mentioned, he sits above average in terms of ground duels, interceptions, aerial duels with other backs in Argentina. He does get caught forward a little bit, similarly to Rodine. And this is where really we see some of this exposure. Uh, because of how advanced he gets in possession, an errant pass that can lead to a counter uh, can, can really show us a little bit vulnerable. And this is kind of what we saw a little bit in the first leg of the Europa League game against Genk. You know, the team's not really in sync, and some of these errant passes when we've got eight guys forward can be kind of dangerous. So keep an eye out for that. He does do great work, though, tracking back, and he seems positionally astute. Uh, I do also have concerns. I saw him get beat a lot defensively when I was looking at the the ground goals he partook in. The ones that he lost, a lot of it was kind of the same the same type of loss where he would get beaten by a winger that could that could just turn direction with the ball, maybe a little bit tricky with his foot, kind of take a step in, faint one way, and then change direction and go the other way. Anybody that could do that decently well and had moderate acceleration would, could get by him, turn him around, as I say. So it worries me in Greece if he's going to go up against the guy like the likes of Levi Garcia or somebody like him. If he's going up against maybe even a a, a Bernard, maybe I, you know, it's not it in this respect. I don't think it's going to take much to get to to catch him like that. He is aggressive. 
And maybe it'll be a little bit of a shock compared to what he's used to in Argentina, but we'll monitor it. And maybe he does well. Maybe, maybe Diego Martinez is going to adjust for this, but it's just something I saw on the tape in the air. Again, he's just above average, not the tallest. His positioning's pretty good though. And uh, he does concede a little space against some of these more physical attackers that he's marked up with, but I never really saw him pay for that. He's a scrappy guy and he can hold his own. So, uh, it, it kind of feed into this like mentality, this fighter's mentality that we see a lot of players coming in that uh, Gordon and Diego Martinez seem to be wanting to bring in. So uh, we're going to move on at this point now from the, the general data and percentile data, and we're going to look at what you guys love. We're going to look at the comparison. If he's replacing Oleg, we're comparing him to Oleg, and we're going to see what he offers that Oleg didn't. And taking a quick look, I think this, for what we want out of our fullbacks at Olympiacos, I think this is an upgrade. Offensively, is a completely different proposition than Oleg with a much wider skill set. Much better asset and build up. And in some aspects, defensively, he's an improvement over Oleg. You can see it here. Interceptions, defensive duels, things like that. Where Oleg has him beat is in improvement in his end product or volume of end product in the penalty area, the service. And while it did surprise me a little bit to see that, I do expect that we'll see, in the case of Ortega, we'll see, we will see his stats increase pretty far. And when we compare to Oleg like for like when both have played in the in the Greek league, it wouldn't surprise me to see Ortega overtake him in most of those respects. And either way, the majority of Oleg's deliveries, when we're if we're comparing the types of deliveries, a lot of them were crosses or balls into the penalty area while he's barely in the final third. Um, this was something a lot of people complained about. Not didn't get forward far forward too much. And in addition to that, guys, you know, I know some of you are probably looking at this dribble success, thinking, "Oh my God, if Oleg dribbles better than this guy, if he has a higher success, this guy can't dribble for for shit." But that's not true. Guys, Oleg, and for the patrons that listen to the Cardona deep dive, Oleg was good at dribbling out of trouble. I said this in that scouting report, and I'm going to say it here. He wasn't good at beating players one-on-one -on -one going down the line, like beating them, taking space, and making a, a, a dangerous offensive advantage. No, that's not what Oleg did. He could dribble himself out of trouble laterally maybe turn around, shield the ball, and get out of it that way. But he wasn't the type of guy that was going to take players on one-on-one -on -one or try to beat them to go down the wing. Ortega does that, and he does it in spades. So it's a much different type of player. Um, Ortega, he's, he's yet another replacement that we have that's that represents a more dynamic version of a position that we removed a player from. So moves more, overlaps more, cuts inside. What we expect out of our fullbacks, what we want out of our fullbacks at Libiacos, based on those more offensive traits that we we want, again, it's an upgrade. So it shouldn't surprise any of you guys now that we're moving on to the, the end of it, we're moving on to the verdict. It is nuanced, but I, I do give it a thumbs up. Maybe it's not a two thumbs up, but it's definitely at least a one thumbs up. And for a couple of reasons, I like what I see offensively, and I really believe he's going to be an animal in Greece. I really think he's going to help us more so than what we've seen from our left side in the past. But my concerns are related to a couple of things. First, I'm always a little bit timid when we bring South American players that have zero European experience because there's great variation in whether or not they can or will succeed. We've seen that with with players that have come through this club here. and But I will say this, given the track record of Cordona Martina so far with the players they have brought in, none of them look bad. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, at the very least, these players are going to have the mentality and work ethic that they want. So I'm going to give them the, ben the benefit of the doubt in this respect and see what happens. But that type of assimilation or transition from South America into Europe not just the games, but lifestyle, it plays a big role. And that's something that concerns me. Secondly, I'm also a bit concerned with the with the fact that he gets turned inside out a little bit too easy, as I mentioned before, with some of these, any winger that could halfway decently change direction and had any decent acceleration, I'm, I'm a little worried. 
So I'm hoping, as I said before, that Martinez can adjust for this or maybe he even improves on it because that's one thing that I really think that we will eat it in, in Europe especially. It could be a rude awakening for this player if we're unable to compensate for that. But all in all, guys, I am happy. I, I am overall happy with the signing. It continues the great business that's done by Cordon this summer. And I vehemently believe that by the time September rolls around, we will have ourselves a real team that plays much more like we expect our Olympiacos to play. So happy with the signing. There hasn't been a signing yet this summer that I've really been unhappy with. You know, I've had some concerns about some signings, namely the El Gabi signing and, and, and this signing as well. There's some nuance or some concerns I have, but overall I'm happy. The, the signings have been pragmatic. They've been good, and they've addressed needs in and improve in areas that we wanted to see improvement, especially offensively. So, I, again, I hope you guys enjoyed yet another scouting report. I hope you found this insightful, and I hope that it has opened your eyes a little bit more to perhaps what the player can offer us. Hope he signs, and I hope you enjoyed the content. So thank you again for listening. This is Gate7 International by the fans for the fans. More scouting reports are coming up. A lot more content for you guys as well. But until then, we'll see you.